Michelle, honey, if you're ready to go, we're ready to face a. I'm, I'm ready. I've oh. been ready. But just so you know, Jean, it's been a day of glitches and、um, really interesting. It's not just you. I have my computer and Zoom and TikTok. A whole lot of things have been wonky, and I headed the advertisement for this.、Um, Program today as are you feeling a little wonky, because the energies are so strong right now. And I know there's some people that go, "Oh, poppycock, that's not true." <laughs> well, I can I can tell you, it's true. We feel it. So、um, I'm going to I'm going to start off with a couple of things just about the、uh, planets, and then I'm going to go back to them. So okay, on, on, on the 12th of April we have Venus in Gemini, and、uh, that's about being flexible, learning how to be flexible. On the 20th of April we have a solar eclipse in Aries, so that's looking forward, moving forward, and on the 21st Mercury goes retrograde in Taurus. So the energy is just not just because of that, but because of so many other things. It's push pull. So let's get right that right right into it. So here we are, a quarter of the way into the year already, and I think that is pretty unbelievable, isn't it? My God. So as you can see, I have a pink background, and let me move over a little bit because what it says is hello. Or welcome April, and I guess I didn't、um, center it right. So yeah, hello April, welcome April, and I have a pink background because this month we have a pink full moon in Libra, and although I have to say it's not all fun and games this month, but of course, it's not been all fun and games for the past couple of years. And certainly, it's not going to be all fun and games this year. But fear not, because there is a lot of positive activity and a lot of things happening. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. So just hang on. So April, what's so interesting about the numbers all the time is April is a number four when it stands alone. It's a, a number four month, right? When it stands alone, and the number four. Can be a little stubborn. It can be a little rigid, but it's about getting down to business, getting organized, you know, cleaning up and clear out, getting into the details. It's methodical. And what I thought about、uh, when I realized, of course, it's the fourth month, easy to figure out. Is that here we are in spring and April? Like, traditionally, we think about doing some spring cleaning, so that's so in alignment with the number four energy. You know, get things done.、Um, and of course, we have Mercury in Taurus. Mercury is thinking, and Taurus is mainly. I mean, there's so many other aspects of it, but it's security, it's money. So four can also present us with some. Challenges, some roadblocks, and、um, and where would those challenges be? Well, some of the clues are in the other numbers: eleven, two, and four, seven, eleven, and two. That are the main player numbers this month. So when you add four to the universal year of two thousand twenty-three. Uh, because in the number two thousand twenty-three for the world is seven, very, very, very highly spiritual number. We all need to understand that because that is part of the reasons that we are really getting into the、um, final laps of this lab, laps, laps of the changes that are going on. So when you add the number seven to the、uh, Four of April. What do you got? You have eleven. So here we have the energy of four, seven, eleven, and two. Seven, eleven, and two are highly spiritual, sensitive numbers, and that energy for sure is going to predominate this month. 
And when I, 11 is a master number. And when I see 11 aspected in anybody's chart, I go, okay, these people are highly intuitive, even if they don't know it. And also there's a high frequency to the number 11 that for us, spiritual beings having a human experience, it can cause anxiousness. It can cause a little bit of anxiety. It can cause a little tension, but what's the good news? The 11 and two are also about balance, about harmony, about cooperation, about relationships and about partnerships. So we have all of that energy going on and we have this lovely pink full moon in Libra on the fifth or the sixth. And that depends on where you live, um, whether it's the fifth or the sixth. And Libra is ruled by Venus. When I think a lot of us know, what is Venus? Venus is the planet of love, of beauty, of pleasure. It's all about healing and relationships. So Libra, like the 11 and like the two, is going to bring in this energy of balance, of harmony, of fairness, of cooperation. It calls for peace. It calls for listening. It can help without a doubt to diffuse. I just want to get rid of some of the noise here. It can, without a doubt, um, diffuse a lot of this very assertive energy we also have because then we have Aries, the sun in Aries. And Aries, what does Aries say? I'm here. Uh, let's get going. Let's let's get things done. It's feisty. Um, but with this strong Libra energy, and especially the reinforcement of 11 and 2, we're being asked to look at things differently. And I want to repeat that over and over again, because that is one of the big messages this month is to look at things differently, especially our relationships, personal, business, and personal includes significant others, friends, uh, your relationship with your higher power. I'm, I'm asking you this month because it's really important to look at things differently. And I just had an experience recently myself and honestly, I didn't even realize the connection at the time um, that I had reevaluated a, re a relationship in my life for the better. I came to an awareness. So I know that this energy is there tugging at us, pulling at us. So um, there, it's important for us to find ways to connect to look at things differently, to open up to discussions, to communicate, to be objective. Uh, it's opening up, it's connecting, but it's not getting too attached. It's kind of, not kind of, it is being more of the observer, but the objective observer. And that's challenging because we have a subconscious tape going that has us um, looking at things in a certain way based on our beliefs and our biases, and we all have them. So this month, it's asking us to, to step out of that. It's so important this month in so many ways. The energy is, is so spiritual with the 11, with the two, with the seven. And it's asking us to, to walk our, our path, walk our life in a different way. Where can you clean up? Where can you clear out? How can you look at relations differently? How can you forgive? How can you cooperate? Um, can you do that? Will you do that? Will you look at your relations differently? So the energy is also wonderful for finding different ways of connecting to other people. And with the energy of Aries, you know, saying, let's get going, it could also indicate maybe this is time to 
to look at or consider a partnership. I, you know, if that makes any sense in anybody's life. Now, what I love about the 11 too is it shines a light on the psychic sciences this month on tarot, numerology, astrology, uh, psychics, physics. Um, and you know what I found so interesting? And I just have to add this or point this out. Um, just before April kicked in, last week I was watching a daytime show. And on that show, they had featured and this is a national daytime show where you usually don't see this stuff. They featured an astrologer who was talking about the big astrological news this year and next. And it is really big. Pluto in Aquarius. I talked about it before. I'm going to continue talking about it all year. And I want to touch on it again today because it's so important. So along with this illumination frequency, it's such a big mixed bag this month, right? Because I can see how the 11 being Uranus could create shocking or unusual events can occur and they will occur for sure. And we can all, all feel kind of anxious, but the energy of the very sensitive two is still telling us slow down, relax, put yourself in a timeout chair, just put yourself out there in a timeout chair, take a break. We do need to have a lot of awareness and a lot of patience this month. There is a need this month to find a soft landing place, some place for comfort, some place for consoling. And I got to say, this is kind of like the new normal, although the new normal has been around for a couple of years, and it feels like, and it's very true, we don't know for sure where everything is going. Now, speaking of which, I find this so significant. Recently, the movie Everything, Everywhere, all at once. And I'm pretty sure if you didn't hear about that movie before, you likely have heard about it now because of all things, it received the Oscar for best picture. Now, that's stunning. Why is it stunning? If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, just know it's a fast moving movie. It's about parallel universes and the choices we make. It's a bit bizarre, but again, what's more bizarre is that it was honored as best picture. And I would just not believe that the uh, entertainment community would realize the importance of this type of movie movie and about parallel universes. So it's definitely um, a future, I don't wanna say futuristic because I think it's happening, it's all happening right now anyway. So it's surely showing us, inviting us and telling us that we're being introduced to the 5D world. And I think the fact, again, that it was a movie that won, you know, Oscar nomination and more people are going to watch it. This is what's happening. So what's the big news of Pluto and Aquarius? Well, they're the big player right now because Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. And I've said it a couple of times now, Uranus is uh, the illuminator, as is 11, the awakener, and it's the harbinger of surprises. And we will likely have some big time awakenings in April and May. So from March 23rd to June 11th, and again, you're going to hear about this over and over again, uh, Pluto in Aquarius is the big news for the positive changes, yay, that everyone in the metaphysical field 
in the spiritual field has been talking about for years now. We've all been talking about where it's going, breakdown to breakthrough. So the last time Pluto was in Aquarius was between 1777 and 1798 which coincided with, guess what? The French and the American revolutions, the changing of the old guard, so to speak. And what does that mean? That means putting the power back into the hands of the people. Now, look, we still have a long way to go, but right now, well, you can liken it to what if you decided to build a house? I think this is a really good metaphor. So if you wanted to build a house, probably one of the first things you would do, you'd have to find the land. Then you have to have the blueprints drawn up. And then you pour the foundation. But guess what? You just might have to clear that land first before you can pour the foundation. That's the destructive part. So here we are with these blueprints for years and years. And now we're in the process of clearing the land before we pour the foundation. So the destructive part is expect upheavals in finance, in banking, in commerce, in the government. Corruption across the board is gonna be revealed. But Pluto, intensifies the in energy of Aquarius with the with Aquarius's theme, which is power to the people. It supports people to organize, to collaborate, to speak out. It's feisty. And hopefully we will disrupt the old guard. Now I just want to say, even though <clears throat> it's only from March until June, and then we kind of toggle back and forth with Capricorn. Just know that next year, it, Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius is going to be around for 20 years. That, again, is huge. So right now, um, a lot of the things that are coming up, Aquarius is the awakener. It's about the truth. We can expect a huge amount, huge of innovation in science, in space, in aviation, in AI, artificial intelligence. And if you've been watching the news, um, so that's really heating up technology, medicine, uncovering untruths and corruption in not just government or high offices, but in science and technology now and even into next year. And we can expect people to uh, fall from power, so to speak, because this is a disruptive energy. So we have all this conflicting energy between the old and the new, which will be going on for a while as we're being prepared for this new foundation. Financially, a lot of instability, especially April and May. Uh, it's a big year of endings and collapse, but it all eventually leading us into this positive place where we as people have more power. Watch the skies, <coughs> excuse me, more UFO sightings. I'm a little bit concerned about travel this month. So just be very careful traveling, uh, air travel, car travel, any kind of traveling. Just, um, just be very conscious uh, when you're traveling. And we will continue to experience this wild, this wild, wild weather. So I should also mention that on April 21st, to May 14th, good old Mercury goes retrograde in Taurus. So we'll be thinking a lot about our resources. And there, there's going to be an uh, emphasis on uh, resources and security. Again, again, this up and down energy. Um, what else did I want to say about that? I think that, I think that was it about the Taurus. 
So, okay, back to the Libra energy and the 11 and the two. <clears throat> Libra is also linked to law, the scales of justice. So we're going to see more noise and energy around these big, important legal cases, more than just what's going on right now in the news. It's also about health issues and healing issues being highlighted. So overall, the themes for this month revolve around illumination, shining a light on things previously unseen, taking a close look at all your relationships, business, partnerships, personal, and a reminder to think and look at things, think of things differently, look at things differently, really go deep. It's about peace. It's about cooperation, beauty, love, harmony, taking it slow, not getting attached to all the noise and keep just breathing in gratitude and kindness and reevaluation. And just know this wild energy is going to continue the wild um, uh, weather and just a lot of noise and a lot of activity going on, but you can maintain your peace and your center. And while everybody else is losing their heads, so to speak, and hopefully that's not literally in any way, shape, or form, we can still remain calm and peaceful and know that this is leading to a better place for all of us. So be in love, be in peace, and reevaluate your relationships and see where you can make changes in your life. So that's all of the big, exciting, illuminating news for April. And thank you. Thank you. That was so, you know, I, I, I've been curious about that song, The Age of Aquarius. Oh, what time are they speaking of? Are they talking about what's happening now or? Pretty much. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We've been supposedly going into the age of Aquarius for many years. I've been hearing that, but I don't think that we have been fully in it, but it could also mean they could have also been meaning about, uh, and that was so far in the future, this Pluto in Aquarius, because that's a big disruptor. That's what I was thinking. Uh -huh. That's a big disruptor in a good way and in a, in a challenging way, because it's tearing down the um, patriarchal type energy, the, um, you know, the power to uh, the... Well, I don't want to get into any kind of polit political thing. It's just giving, it's helping to give more power to us as a people. And more and more people, it's pretty simple. More and more people are gathering in groups and getting together. And we don't have to resist what's happening uh, with force. You know, Gandhi said it, you do not have to, you could peacefully resist. And that's what it's going to take. Violence begets violence. Hate begets hate. Anger begets anger. That is not what this energy is calling for. It is calling for us to pull together, to band together, but in a way that allows all people to feel uh, recognized, to be heard. And we can do it in peaceful gatherings, even in, as, as um, Mother Teresa said, I'll never attend an anti-war uh, demonstration, but I will, I will attend a pro-peace demonstration. So we just have to get that through our heads, because if we want to uh, roll into this new energy where it's more for humanity and and break down these structures that have been holding us back inhibiting us all the corruption unfortunately for many people greed becomes overtakes them 
and, and changes them. And so now we're coming to a period, especially in 2023 with this very strong spiritual energy that we haven't had for, I don't know how, well, nine years ago, we were in a seven year. So I have to look back and see what was going on then. But more spiritual groups are forming without a doubt. There's more spiritual speakers, more spiritual leaders that are coming about as well. And we have to be careful of that. You don't want to ever set anybody up on a pedestal or as a guru. Uh, we're coming to a period of time, which this has always been the truth, but more than ever to acknowledge that we are all equal. And if you resonate to somebody's teachings, all it is is shining a light on what you already know inside. And it's just bringing it back. So no one should be on a pedestal. We all need to come together. We all need to love one another. And if you can't love everybody, at least hate no one. Uh -huh. Right? That's so sweet. That's my favorite. My favorite quote from the Dalai Lama is, um, we were put on this earth to help each other. Right. If you can't help, at least don't hurt. Don't hurt. I love that. I love that too. And you know, I think I think what it is is the big awakening that people yeah. are are everything's becoming visible. So people now are realizing uh that they're they they have to make a choice, you know, that they have to decide to uh, be spiritual even you know yeah. that there there's nothing for them other than that and uh, so you're right you're so right about that you choose know? love always always choose yeah. love just choose well, love right we know love won't hurt in any way <laughs> never and uh no, people he hear hear me saying this all the time too i know but i i do like to repeat it if there's someone, uh, I know politically, it's such a uh, wild, wild west out there and so crazy. But if you don't like somebody politically, okay, what would I suggest you do? Do not send them poison arrows and talk about how much you hate them. That only energizes that energy of, of hate. And as hard as this might be for you, send them love bombs that doesn't condone what they're doing at all. But if you believe in the metaphysical truths, if you believe in energy, and by now, I think more and more and more of us are realizing, oh, I'm starting to understand what that energy stuff is really all about. Send them love because either one or two things will happen. Either all of that love will actually shift them or they will leave. They will go someplace else because love is so all-encompassing, so omnipotent that anything dark can't survive in it. So don't send poison arrows. Send love, love, love. Bless them. And again, one or two things will happen. They'll go away or they'll shift. So that's how I choose to live my life. And I know I've had personal experiences where it worked, where I really, really didn't like someone. And um, uh, the short story, I'd like to tell the story some other time, but the short story was I hit them with love bombs. And one day they out of the blue gene, out of the, out of the blue gene, <laughs> but you're not blue gene. <laughs> That's for Blue Jean if she's listening. <laughs> out, of, out of the blue, they got in touch with me and said, and I didn't do anything, honestly, but send love bombs. Uh -huh. um, they contacted me and said, I am so sorry. I'm so, I know it works. I mean, I did some other little ritual things, good ritual things and lit candles and all that stuff. So, you know, somebody you don't like, just send them love 
Well, you know, we, we talk about uh, the light, the light growing stronger. One thing about sending love, you're sending light. And mm. what happens to the dark when you send light? It recedes. There is no, you know, there can't nothing, be dark and light. It can't be dark anymore. So, you know, it does work. It's just a beautiful thing. Right. Well, this was wonderful. I first want to say, everybody, welcome to EWN and <laughs> Light World Net Network. And uh, there are so many beautiful programs, just like Michelle's. Of course, Michelle's are always fascinating, but there's we're always <laughs> wanting to know about the, you know, what's happening. Right. right. And um, but there are so many beautiful programs on on this network. And oh we'll yes. Find something that really interests you and resonates with you tell us how we can contact you or or a little bit more about what you're excited about right now oh or... okay i'm i'm very excited about a few things uh resurrecting uh my book for one thing the year of living miraculously and getting a new publisher I have a story, a play called Angels Anonymous that I'm looking for a screenplay writer and I'm putting it out there. I've mm. talked to a number of people who are really interested in it, but, you know, you need somebody to write the screenplay. I've got the story. I need the screenplay. Um, and I would love for people, if they're interested, just go to my website, michellelanders.com. That's Michelle with one L. If you want to just chit chat um, about metaphysics, spiritual stuff, numerology, um, what else? Hypnotherapy, coaching. I offer a free 15 minute consultation. Please take advantage of that. I'm more than happy to speak with people. It's all about us coming together. If you want a uh, reading, a numerology reading, I am offering a special, so I would say go email me because it won't be on my my website, uh, Michelle Landers at bellsouth.net. And with that, I want to thank, thank you, Jean, for hosting. I want to thank everybody for even listening. I want to thank Ruth for these incredible programs that she has. And it's all Free. I mean, you can get anything on EWN, right? Enlightened World Absolutely. Network, but I am board certified, which is no light, you know, board certification is really important. And, um, but yeah, I'm board certified because everything that I have done and studied, I have uh, studied and done in depth. And I don't ever want to present information out there, put it out there, or my coaching or anything that isn't, um, doesn't have integrity, or, you know, that it's not of the highest energy that I could put into it. So we all, to go back to what I was talking about, we don't, you know, no one needs a guru. Um, we all have the answers inside of us. Yes, it's important exactly. to work with teachers or, you know, but teachers i'm always teaching and learning at the same time there's no oh this is a teacher this is a student uh-uh it's like this you're learning and you're teaching at the same time a student is teaching the teacher the teacher is teaching the student we're both learning and teaching mm -hmm. so that i hope is crystal clear but also remember you have your own gps system your own guidance system how do you tap into that? Well, that's a whole nother show, but the little tips are get quiet, meditate, allow that energy to come through and that energy will come through that divine guidance, that divine pipeline will be clear when you start to let go of your anger, your resentments, Put your ego aside, um, your fears, your anxiety. I know that's a big order, right? But we can do it in little pieces. We can, at least when you meditate, get into that space of 
um, all that is without any of the other mental, emotional, you know, gobbledygook that goes on in your head. Because in those private little moments of just being all peace and all love, you will receive guidance. Mm -hmm. There's not even a doubt. I do want to say you, you can see that by listening to Michelle, because the, the true spirit led person will be turning you to your inside into yes. your true self, into your heart where you know it's already there. You yes. just have to find it. If yeah. They're trying to tell you, you have to listen to me or you have to do this a certain way you can right away know that that's not spirit led that's not spirit led so anyway thank you so much michelle oh, so sorry about you. the mix up at first and um hopefully hopefully everyone got a chance to have this wonderful wonderful advice well thank you thank yeah. you thank you jane i love you so much i love you too and and if you ever want to go to a wonderful workshop, sign up with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Everybody out there, thanks so much for coming yeah. and listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy April, everyone.